Hello everybody, Daniel Hakikachu is currently getting a lot of justified criticism for his bizarre and disturbing statements. In this video I will look to see whether he has anything to offer regarding evolution. I think most Muslims realize around the world that evolutionary theory and materialism and Darwinism these are problematic ideas and they don't really make sense uh, when you think deeply about them. All of these secular colleges will speak and teach as if evolution is a fact and materialism is a fact and secularism, these are all factual uh, things that no one can question or doubt. So he lumped together three things that are not related. First of all, evolution is a fact. In science, a fact is objectively verifiable data. Materialism, however, is a philosophical position and secularism is a philosophical and political position. He says nobody is allowed to question or doubt them. This is complete nonsense as these are discussed all the time. I doubt he will provide any evidence to back up this claim. But in fact, there's a, quite a lot of things that we should be doubtful uh, regarding these ideologies because ultimately these ideologies are rejecting uh, God, they're rejecting Allah, they're rejecting Quran, and they are spreading doubt about uh, even belief in God. So this is something that unfortunately has spread. Uh, the history of it is that Darwinism is from the 19th century, so it's been about 170, 180 years uh, since Darwinist ideas have spread throughout uh, the world through European influence mainly, and it's also uh, been attempted to inject this in the Muslim world. That's good, as no group of people should be science illiterate. And alhamdulillah, there's been a lot of effort to fight this. But let me uh, begin by giving you a kind of a scenario. So imagine if you are a police detective. You're a police detective and you go get called to a house, and at this house, there's a dead body. Someone has been shot and killed. At least it appears to be that way. You see the uh, body has a gunshot wound, and there is blood, and there's the actual, you don't actually see the gun, but the wound is there, and maybe there's even some uh, casing of the bullet. Maybe there is some gunpowder, uh, all indications show that someone has broken in the house and has shot the this owner of the house uh, to death. Now, you think that it's very clear what has happened, but then your partner says that, no, you know, we shouldn't be too hasty in making this kind of conclusion. Um, you know, maybe this was just a chance event. And you say, well, that's strange. How can you suggest that? Here is the gunshot wound. <laughs> Clearly, there, he died of a, of a bullet entering his body. And if it's a bullet, that means there has to be a gun. And if there's a gun, that means there has to be a shooter. So you are trying to convince your partner, but your partner is saying, no, 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 no. Uh, you know, a gunshot, it's, it's just a hole in the body. That could appear randomly. Um, his body could change in a certain configuration and, you know, the body is just made of atoms. So atoms can fig configure themselves in many ways. Or maybe, you know, there was some kind of debris that uh, spontaneously formed into the shape of a bullet and fell at great speed into his back. And uh, that's how he died. And you're getting increasingly confused and frustrated. What do you mean? Like nothing like this could happen. Nothing like this is anywhere remotely possible. How do you explain the uh, bullet casing? How do you explain the gunpowder? How do you explain the broken window? And your partner says, well, again, these are all things that can happen by chance. There's always a chance that this could take place. You know, maybe the gunpowder is coming from uh, something else. Uh, maybe the broken window was a bird or a ball or a rock somehow came through the window, broke it, and then the rock bounced back out. So there's no evidence of it, but uh, that's possible, right? So with this embarrassingly bad analogy, he's trying to talk about probabilities and highly improbable scenarios. Well, when you look at evolution, there is a vast range of evidence from multiple disciplines that demonstrates evolution and common descent. 
from crime. So this is the way that a lot of atheists will actually argue. And they will argue regarding not a particular murder, for example, but in terms of the entire universe, the entire universe and everything in it and all life in it, our, our bodies, all species, all organism. This is all chance. This is all something that has uh, come together through chaos in the most improbable of ways. How can you say most improbable when you have not calculated the statistical probability or offered any probabilities for any alternative? What's the statistical probability of a divine creation? Can you show any evidence that there is one and the universe is a result of it? But you can see the irrationality of this. You know, you can see when there's a clear, in the, in the case of the murder, it's very, like there's one option or one explanation that is very clear cut and rational. That option is the one that scientists have decided upon, the option of the Big Bang followed by abiogenesis and evolution. The evidence is there to support it. So this is something that uh, we have to recognize about the theory of evolution. And the th prior to uh, the theory of evolution by Charles Darwin in the 19th century, uh, you will find that atheism was not common at all. In fact, there were very few atheists historically. Religiosity has been declining steadily due to greater scientific knowledge, a better understanding of morality, and fewer God of the Gaps arguments. And this is arguably because of this very clear argument. Okay? When we look at the world, when we look at the universe, how can we think that it just came by chance? How can we think that this is something that doesn't have someone who created it, who designed it, who put everything in its correct place? Show me the evidence that there is somebody who created and designed it and put everything in its place. All I see is matter following physical laws and evolution by natural selection. Because when we look at the most advanced piece of technology that human beings have today like what is the most advanced piece of technology maybe it's a computer maybe uh, it's a laptop or a cell phone maybe it's the space stations that are orbiting the earth maybe it's a nuclear power plant or maybe it's some of these new cutting edge particle accelerators that cost billions of dollars to develop in order to ex experiment with subatomic particles. These are the most advanced pieces of technology and it requires years of engineering and science with some of the best scientists to come together to develop these technologies. But those technologies are nowhere near as sophisticated as the most basic building blocks and components of, for example, the human body. This is another very basic argument. Firstly, it is simplicity, not complexity, that is the hallmark of design. He is trying to equate man-made objects with things that occur in the natural world. We know how these man-made objects are designed and created. There is no evidence for this in nature, just his inference. However, we do have evidence of natural selection, shaping organisms giving the appearance of design. So how do we address this idea of random chance? How do we address it? And the thing is that uh, what Darwinists and atheists will say is that all we need is a long period of time. All we need is a long period of time. And then eventually, by chance, everything that we see around us can be formed. And they give an analogy. They say that imagine you have a room full of monkeys and those monkeys are all banging on typewriters. And if you give those monkeys enough time, eventually those monkeys could write a book just by chance, just by banging on the keyboard like this. Uh, and this is an argument that was made by Julius Huxley, which was one, he was one of the big proponents of Darwinism uh, back in, at the end of the 19th century and the beginning of the 20th century. He was a popular, popularizer of Darwinism. And this is what he said, just like a monkey, 
or, or a bunch of monkeys in a room banging on typewriters can eventually produce any book, even literature like William Shakespeare or Charles Dickinson. Just like the monkeys can do that if you give them enough time, then the universe as a whole can uh, come by chance. This is the infinite monkey theorem. If the monkeys are given an infinite amount of time, then they will produce every possible finite text an infinite number of times. This includes a complete works of Shakespeare. However, is an infinite amount of time required for evolution? In reality, there is no single step followed by another single step. There is no ultimate design goal and no scientist is suggesting a complete organism was spontaneously formed. There are multiple simultaneous mutations in DNA that cause changes in phenotypes which makes certain populations more or less adapted to their environment. Natural selection then selects those that are better suited for the environment. Natural selection is not random. It's even atheists now are recognizing the mathematical problem. So there's a great interview on YouTube that you can search for about the mathematical possibility or probability of evolution. And it features uh, an atheist, his name is Michael Gelertner, and he is a computer scientist at Yale University. And he says that I stopped accepting evolutionary theory as an explanation for life and as an explanation for the universe as a whole. It's, it just mathematically does not add up. Firstly, he means David Galanter, not Michael Galanter. He's really not very good with names, is he? Secondly, David Galanter is not an atheist, as Daniel Hakikachu stated, but he is in fact Jewish. He is a computer scientist, but he is not a biologist in any way. The evolutionary biologist Jerry Coyne has written a scathing review into his work, as have other biologists. I will link this article in the description. The biologist Jackson Wheat has done an excellent series of videos that solve the supposed mathematical challenges to evolution. Please watch them for further analysis. You'll have atheists who will write about this and they'll say, look, I actually did not believe uh, in these evolutionary arguments because they don't make sense, but I can't speak out because I'll lose my job. This is another nonsense conspiracy theory. Nobody is prevented from speaking out for fear of losing their jobs. Prominent intelligent design advocates such as Michael Behe and James Tour speak out against evolution and abiogenesis respectively, and yet they keep their jobs as professors in universities. Not much else is said in the rest of the video. I was expecting much better arguments from somebody who touts his Harvard credentials. He repeated the same old arguments that have already been thoroughly debunked. I will end this analysis now. Thank you for watching and please let me know what you think in the comments section.